Bart, we are live. First time on a Sunday Hello. for a while. Sunday live because it's special. And you're going to have to kind of be about the same level as me or the camera well, probably won't focus on you. Okay. Well, then maybe we'll lose the hat. <laughs> I How's think it'll that? still focus on you. Good. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Uh, Scott here. Bart. Scott's Test Dummies uh, special Sunday live. We used to do Sunday lives all the time. Used to happen. Pre yep. COVID. But we, well, yeah. We shut them down a couple of years before that. Sure. Uh, just got too busy, real life and, and everything else. Now you're covering to some of this, and I know we're going to bring guests in in a moment. Yeah. All right. Did you want to. Are you referencing any of your, even your tartan cloth here? Not yet. Okay. Well, leave it, leave it till Eventually. later. Eventually. <laughs> uh, so we do have Greg Swartz, director of Water of Life film. And um, Greg kind of reached out to us early on um, in, in the process of making the Water of Life film. A lot of work. And he's included us, I think this is now our third uh, live stream with Greg. Yeah. And then Erica Skolnick is joining us as well. Uh, Perfectly done. <laughs> from Brook Lottie. And uh, we got, uh, so now, Bart. Now. Classic Lottie. <laughs> right. We've got the Port Charlotte that we'll have. Ten. The old kind of oil can size. Isla Barley, 2011. Woo, we got a little Octomore. You know, I had to get my hands on it. I had to get the hands on the Octomore. And the Octomore. Then we got a couple other, some old tins and stuff that come yeah. up during the film, The Water of Life. Some old Dusties we'll, that uh, were found. We'll and... talk about those as well. And uh, let's just run through a little roll call here real quick. Let's see who all's joining in. There we folks in. Who we got? Uh, commenting Ben Demon Hunter is here. Love Christmas it. on Crestline. Hey, Charlie. Uh, well, Ben says, Salancha Ma, Ma, everybody. Christmas on Crestline. Gene, Gene says, let's watch the dummies live tonight. I said, okay. So here we are. <laughs> the sniper's in. Uh, Alf, wait. Alphonse Palema, bring on the whiskey. Eric Wait Whiskey Studios Studies. Sorry, Eric. The Sniper. That's See, we're out of practice. We haven't we done this for a while. Well, he's the Sniper. I said it. Don Nishida is here from Hawaii saying aloha. Scotty Harrison. He dummies. Alphonse says Salanche Ma from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Donner Pass Whiskey. Hi, guys. We'll tune in if you're still on after Roy's lock on is over. Have fun. What? Roy's got something lock going in. too. Lock in. Did you say lock on is over? Hey, fellas. It's like a uh, John K. Hey, this. fellas. Good to see you tonight. Mark JG. Cheers, everybody. Robert Bruce. Cheers evening, all. Nice. All right. Let's, let's bring it. We'll bring in, uh, let's bring in Greg. We'll let him introduce himself, Ooh. and then we'll bring in Erica. Greg, Welcome. how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Introduce yourself to everybody, and let us, let us all know where you're tuning in from. I'm, I'm back in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm Greg Swartz. I'm the director of the Water of Life film. And I think that, you know, you guys played a really great role in helping us get it made right from the start. I mean, I was here when we were still raising money to make the film. And now we're sharing the film. And it's really exciting. And I'm glad to be here. Yeah, crowdfunded. Wonderful crowdfunding. When So when did uh, Water of Life's first start? When did that inkling Good. first cross your mind? And, you know, what... to the impetus to, to today. Well, I think the, the very first idea came to me in October of 2017. Um, and then we started working on the film in 2018. Um, we shot most of the film in November of 2018 and January of 2019. And then edited it until the goal, the plan was to premiere the film on Isla during the festival of 2020. And it didn't happen. I mean, the festival yeah. didn't happen. So. Right. It's been a long journey. But now for the last six months now, we've been sharing the film online and doing online events. And it's been actually great for us. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The phase yield didn't happen in 2020. Yeah. COVID, <laughs> yeah. COVID shot a lot. At least you shot. got all your filming done before all that went down. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been problematic. Oh. We we wanted, we were still editing when the, when the pandemic began. And the editor and I used to leave hard drives on each other's porches. And we would leave bottles of whiskey with each other. Like I'd leave him a hard drive and some whiskey, and then I'd get it back with a hard drive with a different whiskey, and that was Ooh. sort of our our underground uh, sort of a spy exchange. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's bring in Erica real quick and let her introduce herself. Erica, good afternoon. How are you? Hi guys, good to be here. Uh, <laughs> my name is Erica, and I know some of you guys I've probably seen on virtual before, but I'm with Brooke Lottie, so 
just happy to be here. Good. Thanks for thanks you. for joining us. Yeah. Also, Greg, I need to get on your casserole like thing. This whole like changing of like uh, whiskeys instead of casseroles. My my neighbors weren't giving out whiskey; they were just giving <laughs> out like cookies. So I'm not sure how I get on that train. <laughs> The um, my friends are degenerates. That's why. So, <laughs> Perfect. Um, <laughs> We'd be good neighbors then, Greg. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine a better thing though than opening the door and there's a bottle of whiskey just sitting right. there. Yeah. yeah. And then some film to watch. Like you're like, ah, I've had worse days. <laughs> my my postman loves bourbon, and I keep telling him when you're done, stop on by. You right. know, whatever's legit with the post office, come on by. So. I don't know what that means. Whatever is legit with the post office. Well, he can't stop by with his truck. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah I, I I wanted to invite him in. I think he smelled some some like Brook Lottie on the breath, and I told him what I was drinking. I'm like, hey, here's a little. He's like, whoa, I'm in the vehicle. Oh, yeah. What was I thinking? I, I've gotten to know him so well, and, and I almost like destroyed the thing. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so Erica does work with Brooke Lottie, though, and and Greg. A lot of your film, um, it, it's it kind of it's Scotch, it's Scotland related. You go back to you know the the days of blending, uh, the dry days through the seventies into the and then into the single the malts whiskey, the coming whiskey to lock. life. But um, inadvertently, I think, or kind of tell me. Seventy uh, percent of the movie kind of focuses on Brooke Lottie, Jim McEwen, uh, mm -hmm. Mark Rainier, yeah. and, and there. But uh, and I don't know if that was the original intent. And I know you you've been asked yeah, as the well, surgeons. Yeah, but you've been asked as well. You know, did did Brooke Lottie pay you to make this money? And they they movie. didn't. Or yeah, no. make pay you money to make the movie. But no, not at all. Right. Yeah, as you, as you guys know, the film was crowdfunded, and and we we. We knew ahead of time that we wanted to focus on a handful of distilleries that we thought were doing something very creative and very exciting. And it just became apparent that the Brooklady story not only reflected the whiskey we wanted to talk about, it, re it was just a great story. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the distilleries don't have a really exciting, it's not their fault. I mean, you'd probably be better off if you didn't have an exciting, exciting story. You know, there's that Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> I mean, I think Brooklady was born in interesting times, you know, right. and, and I think the, the, mad dash and the creativity that came out of it that was the first 12 years of Brooklady's resurgence was just such a compelling story. It demanded screen time. 100%. Yeah, there's so many stories. The old the old stock and the tired wood, you know, and, the, and then the whole idea. Heck, even my old, I, we found an old Dusty, and it was funny because now I can't remember, and no spoilers, but it, right from the get-go, it said aced in uh, Rioja, Rioja Cass, and in your movie, they explain what that term is, and you don't really hear aced much anymore. Right. I, I think with – Erica can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think I've heard different people from Brooklady call ace different things. Hmm. Yeah. A additional, cask, evolution. Yeah. But I've also heard okay. diff additional <laughs> – <laughs> additional cast. I don't know. I've heard, but additional There's cast evolution. Variations of it, though. Yeah. Yeah. I would say experimentation. Oh, well. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that's the other one. Yeah. Uh, it just that magic, though, of bringing in those wine casts, you know, and Mark even saying, you know, hey, you know, we're not doing anything that new. You know, yes, some different places and, and cast types coming in but you know sherry had been around sherry cast so it was that wonderful part of the story and and having met mark and knowing how now when we interviewed him at waterford you just like one question and it's off to the races was it like that with you <laughs> yeah not only was it like that I, I swear to god this is true we were we got there a few minutes before he did he got out of a car and then started talking to us while we were following him into the building. And then he made everybody an espresso and he's still talking the whole time. And he told us this amazing 30 minute story about Vikings bringing barley to Ireland and planting it down the East coast of Ireland. And at the end of that story, I was like, well, we still have to go get the camera out of the truck. <laughs> we do that all over. Sure that awesome information, but we got none of it. So. Yeah. yeah, we were at a pub and, he, and uh, we started talking uh, everything from 
board games, war games to Vikings and travel. And he says, come here. And he shanghais me over. And in this pub, they had this wall world map. And he's showing me, you know, these different areas. And, and, and I think you even took a photo of it. Mm -hmm. It was just, it, yeah, it was like school. It was awesome school. He's a force of nature. Yes. I think he's like on a hundred percent of the time. Like he, I don't know if he ever like, has a day where he's like not already like that, but I could be wrong. <laughs> did uh, once you got in there though, um, you know, at Brook Lottie, do you think, did it kind of steer the film from there? Did you go, okay. Uh, did you have kind of, or did you know you was going to spend that much time at Brook Lottie or once you got in there with Jim and Mark talking about the different aspects of it, did you kind of say we're, we're moving the film more this way now? Yes and no. We didn't, we really discovered that when we were looking at the footage afterwards, but we knew Brooklady was going to play an outsized role. And, and wow. uh, to be honest with you, part of that was just simple math in that, like we had Jim for eight days. We had Rachel Berry for four hours. Mm. We, had, uh, we had Billy Walker for four hours. You know, um, we get half days of people's times and with Jim, you know, it's retired. So he was like, it was fully at our disposal. Yeah. And that, you know, that, and then it just, that happened to be the, first place we shot the first main thing we shot was at Brooklady and it just it was like a fish that grows to fill the tank it's in you know the story just filled up and there was nothing there that we were like oh we can cut this there was none of it I mean, you know we wound up cutting lots of other stuff that we hated to have to cut just to make room for it frankly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 the history there um you know the way you segmented off with there's little there's your your moments that you preserve you know, I, I won't go into the story, but the penny in your pocket, when when the viewers get to that, I was, I mean, I was sharing, I just finished watching the movie and I'm sharing that story with my wife, saying it's unbelievable story that's in there. So, I mean, just uh, the power that just comes right through the story. The, the big secret that it, it's going to, I can't, call it a big secret much longer because I tell it all the time is that the movie is actually not about whiskey. The movie's about people. I mean, that's really what we kind of built everything around was the people who make it and their lives and their passions and the rest of it. You know, there's not a scene in the movie. I'm not spoiling anything. It's a, this is something that's not in there. There's not a scene in the movie that's going to teach you how to make whiskey. You know, it's not a primer on how whiskey's made. I mean, that's a, mentioned for sure, but there isn't a, you know, this many hours of fermentation time and these are the good cut points. And, you know, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to tell the story about craftsmanship and that means it's about people right well and the effectiveness literally i'm watching it and as soon as they started talking about you know all the different experiments that jim was putting out and all that immediately i saw a couple of the old cans and i thought oh i've got some of those you know tucked away still i had my infinity second edition i had my uh 3d3 and i pulled those out you know and I'm, i haven't even sampled them in so long so it drove me right to some of some of my older brook lines. Yeah. I was like, oh my. Yeah, I showed up over here and we got ready and it's like, here's something to wet your whistle. I'm like, it's already been wetted with some brook <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> that was good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> um Erica, let's, let's start though. We poured uh, the classic yeah. line a little bit if you kind of want to introduce this one. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So classic Lottie for us, I always kind of like to say it's our it's our bread and butter at our distillery. We kind of talk a lot, obviously, about it. But what's super unique is uh, the fact that it is non-peated. And there's not a whole lot, as you guys can imagine, of non-peated or unpeated um, scotches on the island of Isla. Isla is really, really well known for all of their heavily peated, smoky. I know. It's all the stuff that you guys like. Um, oh, yeah. Scotches. So... And we'll get there. We'll, we'll get to those later. But um, Classic Lottie, Classic Lottie is kind of like this, this beautiful, unpeated version. But what's really kind of remarkable about it is each individual, like, kind of bottling that comes out, production that comes out or whatever, is really this crazy thing that Jim and now Adam have been doing, you know, in each different bottle. And you can actually look it up on our website. Um, if you guys were to pull your number on the back of your bottle and I were to pull mine, they would have very different ingredients in terms of the casks that were utilized, the warehouses it came from, the ages on them, the type of casks, all of that different stuff, um, just to kind of find that it's 
we don't want to have consistency to the point of, you know, you have it today. It's the same as 1881 court sort of kind of thing. But um, we want there to be consistency overall where it's not this huge differentiation. But there's, you know, every ever so slight because we're not adding any additives or um, caramel coloring to make sure the color looks exactly the same or anything like that. So we really try and hone in on the fact that, you know, barley matters and casks matter and, not, you know, the ingredients that we're utilizing matter. Um, it's non-chill filtered, which gives it that lovely velvety, creamy, smooth texture. Mm -hmm. um, and you're sitting at a hundred proof right off the bat. So oh, yeah. we're doing, we're doing good so far. <laughs> now, uh, Jason Mashin drum is tuning in and you did a live stream with, with Jason as hey, well. Jason. And he did an excellent job. Um, he even had the website pulled up. There's a so there's a lot code or a bottle code basically on on each bottle, and you can go to the Brook Lottie's website and enter that bottle code, and it'll bring up all of the information about what's in that bottle. So it was very it's very detailed. It's very neat. It's very nice. Yeah, it's, a, it's a five digit code on the back. If you guys at home have a classic Lottie, you know, sitting around, or you ever get curious and you're in a, you know liquor store or you're in maybe, you know, a bar and you ask them just to, to see the bottle, you can see the back five numbers. It's like two numbers, a dash, and there's three numbers after that. And to the, you know, normal person, even myself, I would be like, I don't know what any of this means, probably for production or, you know, some other code that they use, but it's actually super unique that you get to go in and actually look at, you know, how it's made and what's, what's in it and all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But it is a great, um, it's a great scotch in general. I, I really love, you know, starting out with this, not just because it is the bread and butter, but it just, you know, you can't, you can't go wrong with a good classic Lottie. It's got this beautiful, like honey straw, like kind of, you know, color to it, but it still is so, it has so much depth in terms of taste profile and all that kind of stuff. So. So much citrus and vanillas mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. Just nice. A lot of mouth feel. Sweetness to it. You know, and people on the chat don't don't shoot me, but I love a classic Lottie and soda with like a, just a squeeze of lime on the porch because <laughs> I I'm in Atlanta, so it's hot all the time except for you know maybe half the year. So you know, our fans know that you drink it your way. Yeah, the exactly. Whole exactly. I mean, I love it neat. Don't get me wrong. I I I love you know whiskey in its purest form. I wouldn't be doing what I was you know what I'm doing if I didn't love it, but. Um, it's a super, like you guys said, super vibrant, a lot of citrus notes, a lot of like really light notes that make for a great summer porch sipping kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned 50% as well. Doesn't Brook Lottie introduce all, all of their bottles? Aren't they at 50% at least? Major, yeah. Well, all of them are um, at least 50, if not more, if they're cast strength mm -hmm. or, you know, other, yeah. other than that. So yeah, we, our lowest we go is 50. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. You can use your you can use your fancy pipette if it's too much for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. See, Greg, you already got the water. You're good to go. <laughs> That's right. Um, I actually looked up my I looked up my laddie code on this bottle right now. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It, what do you have on yours? Because I didn't pull mine up yet. I've batched twenty slash two three two eighty two casks, four vintages, three barley types, eleven cask types. Wow. Uh, which is. Yeah mind-blowing and they're and, uh, you know I, I love that they change all the time too i mean um I, I know when we were interviewing alan logan he said to us nobody ever s s takes a sip of a whiskey and says man does that taste efficient and, <laughs> you know, um, the it, it's wouldn't you rather it just taste better than yeah you know, you know as or as good as it can taste you know yeah um but yes yeah, so I'm not going to read this whole thing because it is it is as as Erica knows these the varietal are... the varietal of casks I will say are probably some I, you know not the most interesting part of the most you know interesting of the equation because there's just so much different right it's not like oh there's some virgin oak and some bourbon and you know this that and the other it's like you got wine casks pork casks all kinds of stuff in there so yeah that that surprised it with me um, yeah. it's not and that, you know I would say this is Brook Lottie's. Um, basic entry or their yeah. uh what's their flag stand flag right? yeah it's the it's yeah. the Flagship. flag model yeah for sure and but it's the makeup of it is really complex at the same time it's not really a basic what would be a basic entry bottle for most distilleries right yeah. right so um you know 
I did a, an event, one of these uh, kind of things a few weeks ago that Simon Coughlin was on. And um, and Simon said something to me about the Brooklady spirit that you really get, obviously, in the classic Laddie. And I thought it was really interesting because I said to him, I know that there were rumors that before you bought Brick Lottie, you guys tried to buy Art Beg. And he said, we did. We did. And he said, thank God we didn't succeed. Hmm. Uh, and, he, and he said, the reason is, he said, he, he said I love Art Beg. Art Beg's great. But he said, the Art Beg spirit is very, very um, rigid. It is, it is, you know what an Art Beg is immediately. And he said, what we discovered with the Brick Lottie spirit was that we could take it in all kinds of creative directions. And Art Beg just wouldn't lend itself to that. Um, and that's not a quality judgment; it's just a style judgment. And I, you know, and that's one of the things I love about the classic Laddie is the, I can drink an Octomore and I can still taste the same spirit in there, even though yeah. it's you know a hundred miles away. Yeah, and there are a lot of people that sometimes say, you know, even the the ones that have been drinking Scotch forever, you know, they'll even say that they pick up a little bit of almost like that peaty note, the Isla True, you know, kind of, you mm -hmm. know, whatever chimney kind of different taste that you're getting off of it, and it's probably because at some point or another, the cast that we're utilizing, one of the casts that we're utilizing has maybe seen a Port Charlotte or, you know, a finished peated product. And again, it kind of gives that beautiful story of kind of what we do, everything from like completely the unpeated to the most heavily peated scotch in the world, which I know is y'all's least favorite. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what? Uh, real quick though, for those that are watching, if you don't know, uh, a bottle labeled Brook Lottie or from Brook Lottie is unpeated. And Jim McEwen in, in the film goes into this really in, in not, I mean, in detail, I would say, but he was under, uh, people kept asking him, you know, if it's Isla, it needs to be peated. And, you know, him and, and Mark, him and Mark's idea was they were doing this wine cast stuff. They were using this unpeated spirit. So finally Jim broke down he said, okay, <laughs> we'll do a peat. And he comes in. So anything then with the Port Charlotte label mm -hmm. is their peated whiskeys. And then Jim said, I'm really going to sock it to them. I'm going to do what nobody else does and make something that's really heavily peated. And uh, that's the Octomore line. So really three different whiskeys from Brook Lottie. Well, and again, no spoilers at all, but he spends some time explaining. And mm -hmm. he even uses the phrase smoked salmon and how it's done. Yeah. And then there's the time in the movie where he gets into some depth. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, man, if I pull this one out at my house now, I'll never even get over to the show. I'll never <laughs> get over to this show. Yeah. There was a point where I was, no, talking, no. I was like, now I want to go pull that off my show. Man, coming to you live from my house. Yeah. 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 He'd be like, well, Mark couldn't make it. Again. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think everything in a lot of distilleries, I'm not, you know, it's not just us, but I think we, we unanimously, I can say for, many of the distilleries out there are really trying to methodically think of sustainability or maybe like how they make their products going forward. You know, I think a lot of people care about how it's made, um, kind of the thought process of why they do it. You know, we're not, yes, at the end of the day, are we looking to, to sell bottles? Absolutely. That, you know, we wouldn't be in the business if we weren't. But I think you can tell even from the film that this is more of like, poetry to them. This is just fun. They're not even, they, I think Jim even mentioned, this doesn't even work for him. You know, how could you not love, you know, diving into some old, you know, like dusty bottles and rediscovering that kind of stuff. I think there's a reason why, um, you know, our distillery at Brook Lottie, we do what we do, but every single product we come out with, we've, I, I guarantee you, we've thought well and through um, for a long time before releasing it. Mm -hmm. You won't ever see a vodka come from our distillery. We say that. Much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that may be mentioned. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I, I just go ahead. Sorry. No, you go, Greg. I was going to say I, I just last week finished watching the uh, that Michael Jordan documentary on uh, Netflix, mm -hmm. and I noticed I, I made this mental connection between Jim and Michael Jordan. You know, when you mentioned it a minute ago, when he said he got tired of people giving him crap about Portia, about Perlotti not being peated. And he thought, all right, mm -hmm. I'll show them. And that seems to be the Michael Jordan technique. Find mm -hmm. some, some, from some tiny trigger and, and be like, all right, well, I'm just going to, you know, absolutely smash you now. <laughs> and it's not like, I'm not going to just beat you. I'm not just going to make a, a, a peated whiskey. I'm going to make a whiskey that's going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to run up 50 points on you at the in the process. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I don't know. I was watching it one night and I thought, oh, okay, I get that. That's, I don't think it's a bad thing to compare Jim to Michael Jordan. No. I'm sure Jim would enjoy it. Legends. We're all legends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Love All right, let's move. Uh, we got we do have a couple of clips, and so uh, Jim McEwen was the uh, the master distiller there for since the eighties when they when they purchased it up until about two or three years ago. When did Adam? So when Adam did took, yeah, Adam took over about six years ago, five six years yeah. ago. I want to say. Okay, we've, we've got a couple. Sorry, Erica, go ahead. No, you're good. Um, and then Jim essentially took the reins over really started distilling and then we opened our distillery back up in 2001. Um, so we think he started, you know, kind of rifling around a little bit in there and, you know, 2000, 1999 was kind of when he was really starting to get, get things going. Okay. Hmm. Uh, a couple of clips though we have uh, from Greg with, with Adam talking from the distillery. So we'll bring one of those in now and then we'll talk about it. My name is Adam Hannett and I'm the head distiller at Brooklandy Distillery. My title was, was an interesting thing in relation to taking over from Jim McEwen, master distiller, decades of experience in making whiskey. For me, stepping into those shoes, there was a lot of people watching, a lot of people seeing that, so I, I had to be honest about it and I had to, for me, I didn't feel like I could walk up and say, yeah, I'm a master distiller too, because I'm taking over from someone who's a whiskey legend. I suppose I'm a good example of Jim's legacy where, you know, he's, he's created an opportunity for people in Isla where you can, you can fulfill your potential. When somebody gives you the opportunity, you want to prove that you made the right decision. You've got to have experience, you've got to put that into practice. You know, to be in the same bracket as Jim McEwen, you know, you've got to earn that. Cheers. I'm going to say those warehouses mm. have to be worth the price of admission. Mm. <laughs> they are. Don't worry. <laughs> all those casks, all those different. Yeah, walking. there's nothing really like it, especially, you know, and Greg can say it and I can say it. It's not for like, you know, pat ourselves on the back or anything like that. But we were able to know, we, we have been able to walk through with Adam and have him like literally just pull from the cast and pour, you know, glasses around. It's, yeah. It's my church. I love it there. I really do. <laughs> well, and even when you go to Isla, there's a lot of different distillers you can go oh, to yeah. when you get that experience. So, yeah. 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 And they're, it, and it, um, they're a type of people that are just so warm. Like when you arrive, that you are family. They take good care of you. They are mm -hmm. excited you're there. They want to share their passion with you. You know, it's a very, it's a different, it's a different type of experience when you go like overseas abroad or anything like that and, and are able to, to do something like that for sure. It's not just Scotland. It's not just Isla. I think there's a lot of, a lot of people that, you know, it translates very differently. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I was just, I was looking at our time. Um, we will generally, we try to stick to an hour, hour and 15 minutes somewhere in there. So do we have time? Do you want to go to Isla Barley 2011 next? Yeah. Or do you want to jump to Port Charlotte? We can, we can, let's just jump to Port Charlotte. We can do Isla Barley or Port Charlotte. We can jump to Port Charlotte. Let's get into the PD stuff. That's, I know Bart wants to get into the PD like stuff. The and his talk. He, he, he wetted his palate before Ooh, he came over. He wetted. I'll touch really lightly on Isla Barley, but we don't have to, you know, do a yeah. first tasting with it. But, you know, Isla Barley is just, it's another unpeated version for us. Um, it, it really speaks a lot, again, to the barley and how much it matters, but even more so the, you know, employment and the, the, the future of Isla is super important to us. Um, as you can imagine, the island only has about 3,500 to 3,600 people. Um, and we happen to be you know, the second largest employer on the island of Isla. Um, so we're very lucky in the sense that, you know, not only is it the people working in the distillery and the still room and the marketing department and all that, but we really believe that like the farming and the barley and all of that kind of stuff matters. Ag agriculture in general, um, how we're doing it, where we're doing it at. Um, so Isla Barley is kind of almost in, in my eyes, it's almost a tribute to, you know, the people again. I mean, a lot of what we're making is to the people. Um, and then Isla Barley, as you can imagine, only comes from the island of Isla. So barley varietals grown there right down the street from, from the distillery. So well, and I, I agree 100% with everything you said there. And when we went over and met with Mark over at Waterford, and then we went and met with uh, a farmer, Seamus Duggan in Ireland, and got to see him with so much pride, mm -hmm. literally pull out, you know, uh, 
uh, white spirits saying this is was distilled, but it's the grain from my farm and seeing the pride that comes along with that and how yeah. that comes through in this movie as well. Because yeah. you get to meet one of the Isla farmers that's that's doing the barley or are growing the barley. You don't really do the barley, growing the barley <laughs> for our body. So the king of soil, we call him. We don't call oh. him the king, of soil, the king <laughs> of soil. So you will, yes, I won't, I won't, I won't dive too much into that one. But yes, he is he's a prevalent part. His actually, I just the other day got a picture from him and somebody else, I don't know. He just changed his life license plate to like Octo Man or something like that. <laughs> he was like, ask, he was like, I wonder whose car this is. And I was like, yeah, I really wonder whose car this is. Can't imagine. So yeah. Do you know how do you know how he signs his emails? No. He signs his emails, handsome farmer, James. <laughs> <laughs> he also likes to call himself handsome a lot. He's only like, he's like an eight foot giant. I mean, he's not. Really I was going to say, I was going to ask Greg, he looks tall. He looks he's like so six. Tall. Yeah. yeah, he's tall. The only, the only two people we interviewed in the whole movie that I could look eye to eye with without, because it's a problem. I'm six foot six and interviewing people, I have to sit down because otherwise their eye lines are weird. Bart, Bart, scared me out on that one. Yeah. Well, but, and Bart and I have yet to meet face to face. So, and but it will Alan be. Logan, we'll have eye Alan levels. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> but Alan Logan and James Brown are the two that I could actually look at eye to eye. Yeah. Adam's also really tall, too. Yeah. Like he said, it's, I'm always like this to them. I'm 5'5, five five and I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you got, uh, Greg, you guys lead up in the, in the film uh, talking about most, you know, before the eight, before the 60s. Uh, in the seventies, uh, most of your scotches were not single malts. You had sing you had distilleries, well, but all the whiskeys yeah. were being used in blends. Yeah, the malts were being used to blend. And then, and I think uh, Scott Adamson from Tomatin, he was explaining us to to us as well. Uh, the oil crisis back in the seventies kind of led to a lot of um, economic. Um, crashes in different mm -hmm. countries all the downturns and a lot of uh and that led to some of the you know there wasn't money there wasn't much money out there people weren't buying whiskey a lot of these mm -hmm. distilleries you know went out of business and it starts to become quote the old man's drink at yeah. the time yeah yeah uh, which you go into a little bit not, not necessarily the the oil crisis but then the the birthing really of in of a uh, single malts uh, independent bottlings of mm -hmm. and how the success of those then leads to your, your distilleries wanting to release their own mm -hmm. uh, whiskeys uh, yeah. as a result of the success of independent bottlers. Yeah. The progression uh, as shown is just, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it's amazing. It's its yeah. own well, thing. And, that, and, you know, I didn't realize that or know that. And so that was kind of new mm -hmm. to me that we wouldn't be where we were at with Scotch without independent bottlers, you yeah. know, showcasing you know gordon and mcphail from the time mm -hmm. uh caden heads mm -hmm. uh and several others in your film what did yeah. how much of that did you know going in or was that kind of new to you as well a, a little of both i mean I, I did a lot of research but a lot of the research was sort of done on camera you know and um i think billy walker says about how what a huge debt the industry owes to independent bottlers and it's funny uh, two weeks ago i did an event with billy walker's son who's a, a big independent bottler now and he had just seen the film and he said he couldn't believe his father said such nice things about independent bottlers because he said he he said he's constantly turning me down for casks and chasing me away <laughs> uh, <laughs> um you know it's funny mark renier told us a whole story I, I couldn't use it in the film it just there wasn't room for it but it's kind of what you just said scott uh about the oil crisis had a big impact in that the distillery parent companies really gave a dictum to pe to the to the satellites and said you need to make yourself more efficient we got to get off of oil we got to do this and a lot of the distilleries that couldn't do it were the ones that they closed down and they said isla particularly suffered because there was not a real way to make them more efficient I mean, they, they switching to to natural gas was not an option um you know switching making things more productive friendly because it was so it was remote so that made them inefficient and that's all they cared about and i, I found that personally fascinating and you know mark told us a hundred of those things and i couldn't use all of them so <laughs> mm. yeah the way when he gets when mark gets going <laughs> yeah yeah you could film like three more movies you know you'd be like oh there's an idea there's an idea uncle I mean, me drink 
Uncle Nate Drinks Whiskey says that out of 900 plus bottles, Port Charlotte is top 10. Wow. Saying he, I think he's saying he's tasted over 900, has 900 bottles, and Port Charlotte is a top 10 -er. That's a high, high honor. Thank you for saying it. It is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, in Port Charlotte for us. Oh, go ahead. Um, oh, how much Brooklady goes in the blood? We definitely still have a portion of it. You'll find them, especially like overseas. Um, you know, our, our name kind of resides on them in some way, shape, or form, whether it's the Port Charlotte or Brooklady or something like that. Um, I've picked up one or two in the wild. Um, so they, they do exist. But um, it's not a it's not a substantial substantial amount. I think you know obviously it's kind of you know it makes a mention in the movie too. But um, for a while there there was you know a lot of cask exchanging and all that kind of stuff happening. And you know we were trying to just stay alive. I think for the most part there wasn't a whole lot of emphasis on the production itself. Um, but you know we got very we got very smart and stopped making a, a new release every week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, the part of the movie where they talk about the collectors were going nuts when yeah. it came to Brooklyn because they're like, ah, I can't, I can't get it all. I can't yeah. get it all. Yeah. No. yeah and, and they asked Jim, they said, you know, why are you doing this? You're releasing too many bottles. It's and funny. He said, because we can. Yeah, we're doing we're it. Having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? We're enjoying ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So um, jumping into Port Charlotte, I know I kind of harped a little bit on Isla Barley, but we'll jump into the PD stuff now. So yeah. Port Charlotte kind of sits in our, our heavily peated category. We do Octomore, it's super heavily peated. Um, Port Charlotte is kind of a nod to the fact that even in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, they were already utilizing, um, you know, dried peat, peat bogs to not only fire up chimneys and keep, you know, your chimney, you know, going at night, but also started drying out malt as well. So we we know for a fact there's documentation of, you know, them utilizing peat for, for drying out malt and penetrating that lovely smoke note um, all the way back then. Mm. So essentially, um, Port Charlotte is, again, like I said, it's a nod to that, but also um, there used to be a distillery just about a mile or so away called Lock and Doll Distillery. Many of you guys have heard the story. Um, that's not in production anymore, but um, they were the ones that were essentially doing the peated whiskey and stuff back then. And so we kind of redid a, for a while, and I, for anybody that has an old Port Charlotte you know, lying around, there's certainly still lots of them. Um, the old gray tin that we used to do or the white, the marshmallow white tin that we did. It kind of always just to us at least felt like it was getting lost in translation or just kind of like wasn't really as popular as it should have been. You know, everybody knew about the teal bottle. Everybody knew about Octomore. But in terms, you know, P Port Charlotte somehow just kind of like fell off the map a little bit and then it wasn't quite as popular. And we really wanted to ensure that people could drink this beautifully heavy peated product that, you know, at the time we weren't showcasing the age on it, but just really making sure that people really saw the, how, how really beautifully made it was. Um, so we did a kind of a revamp the last two or three years. We've changed it to kind of do three different variations. So the one that we're drinking tonight again is the Port Charlotte 10. So obviously a minimum of 10 years on that bad boy, but we're utilizing a few different casks on it. Um, so again, we kind of introduced this new way of, you know, not every peated product's gonna taste the same, like the Freud doesn't taste the same as Ardbeg, which doesn't taste the same as Port Charlotte. And that's what makes it so, so great. Um, and so we really wanted to showcase that, you know, not only the peat can vary, but also just like the utilization of flavor and all that from casks. And so we do bourbon cask, um, X, I think, American, so it's an X American, a virgin cask, and then also an ex wine cask as well. Mm. Um, so super kind of dynamic. You get a lot of, you know, not only just smoky, beautiful notes, um, but also some red fruit in there, some nice vanilla notes. Um, it's a really, really awesome sipping whiskey for sure. Yeah, I can remember the first time uh, we, when we first time I saw PC10 here in Wichita, picked it up and tested it. And, and soon as I sipped it and knew, I was like, man, there's some wine cask uh, going on. This isn't just a peated whiskey. There was more going on with it. And yeah. I, I think that's pretty obvious with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, I think it's a surprising type of whiskey. You know, a lot of people will, you know, assume it's probably going to taste like this or that or the other. And um, yeah, I think it's delicious. Brazil. Hello. Wow. Hello, Mark. Yeah. I just saw that, um, that, you know, they love that it's popular, but they want it all for themselves. That was one of the other comments. <laughs> and the new packaging <laughs> is unique. Yeah, don't, don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Packaging they do all the, the cool things. 
the cool things with the the actual name in the glass on the yeah. bottle, which is neat. Yeah, yeah the neat. Style. I you know I do I do think it's a sleeper though, and it's it's underrated. I think yeah. when, when people talk peated whiskeys, you you consistently hear Lafroig ten, you yep. hear Ardbeg ten, sure, Lagavulin. Absolutely. Yeah. And this one is 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 in that bunch, and it's right there near the top for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a forty ppm on it, so you're looking right around where a lot of the other you know peated whiskeys are. So phenols wise, we're right in the you know right in the middle of, uh, of a lot of those really. Um, but yeah, kind of like you said, it, certainly, and we even we even get it. You know, you see a lot more of the Lafroigs are bad. They've been around, and they're probably more prevalent and available. And that's another reason why we just don't make and market quite as much as, as those distilleries do. But, um, you know, overall it's, I think it's also really fun. And I know that you guys have, have definitely done this is putting all of these different variations of peated whiskeys up against each other and just mm -hmm. seeing how crazy different they are in style, but appreciating each and every one of them. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. I get a lot of like smoky clay. Yes. Muddy. I the, actually, you know, it's not, it's like you guys do this for, for a side job or something. But, <laughs> Uh, we always like to say that it's got some muddy like quality to it. Yeah. Not like overly powering or anything like that, but almost like a kind of muddy, muddy, smoky kind of flavor. Mm. Graham oh. Frazier asks, can Erica explain the codes on different versions of PC? So one that we have, I, we have the PC 12 and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. If you remember how to. Uh, oily and knock for oh, a yeah. tail. Yeah. So right. in terms of the different, so I wonder almost if you're talking about the Octomores, if you're talking about the codes from Octomore, but maybe not. You might just be talking about. The I, I, I think I, th I know Graham and I think he might be asking about the current Port Charlotte, not the 10 year old, but like the PAC and the OC. Oh, and the, OK. And, and, then, the, and then the 2011 and the 2012 and all of those versions. Got it. So um, that, so there's three different variations for each of our different, um, well, except for Octomore. So in terms of Brooklady, you have Brooklady, you have Isla Barley, Black Art or something like that. And then for this one, you have Port Charlotte across the board. You have Port Charlotte 10, and then you have Port Charlotte Isla Barley, which is utilizing the Isla Barley. Again, we're going back to that barley foundation, but making it peated. Um, and then the third, which I think, like you said, Greg, what he's mentioning is the different cast variations that we've started, you know, utilizing is our piece, our MRC or our you know, what have I got back here? I have a few different ones, but um, those are a nod to, MRC is a beautiful one. <laughs> um, those are a nod to the different utilizations of casks that we're utilizing. And by essentially the law or whatever else, we might have gotten those casks prior to X, Y, and Z. So for, you know, purposes of, we can't just sell it out. We usually just code it a different way. And it's kind of a way to say, this is the type of cast that we used. This is the variation of it. And we're going to leave it at that because we can't buy legalities, put the whole entire name on there. Mm. Yeah. But but I will say, I hope Erica doesn't mind. I, I don't work there. I can say whatever I like, but I will say oh, yeah. you can find them. Please. You can find them on the Internet. That's what you I will can. say. You can easily <laughs> find them on the Internet. You can. <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's I have this is the newest one, if the I'm not PAC. mistaken, right? Yeah. The PAC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. So that's um, a wine cast, I think. French wine. PAC. Yes. Yeah. And the good thing is I couldn't tell you what that one's called because I don't know how to pronounce it. So I'm already yeah. out of the running. Well, well and a lot, of, a lot of them, I will say, <laughs> I'm glad that they abbreviated them because some of them I'm like, I wouldn't even even be able to say this. Yeah. Erica, <laughs> I'm just going to say that uh, we don't have any of those. <laughs> oh, I got you guys. I have samples of those. I got you. Here we go. Well, I like it. Look yeah, at that. Well done. Well done. Well, you know, well, I'll tell you a quick. A, a funny quick aside, this this one I held up a minute ago, the MNC, this was a distillery a exclusive. One. Yeah. Um, th and this is the whiskey I dream about whenever I have a dram of it. <laughs> <laughs> and Brooklady has never released this as a wow. main product. It was just this one thing. So every time I do an event, I bring it up because I'm trying to launch a low pressure campaign to get Adam to, to make MNC an official release. Nice. <laughs> I've bought as many bottles of this as I can find. Where's um, mine? So that's. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. I didn't get a bullet. Down, I've, I'm, I'm I, have one, I have one left. This oh, one's sweet. actually empty. Hey, Greg, we don't have that <laughs> bottle. <laughs> See, there was not. Yep, I'm going to leave it. 
<laughs> yeah, any of the ones, any of the the specialty bottlings, you can find some of them on our website, I will say, and it's not just to like do a sales pitch or anything, but some of them are available still. Um, if you wanted to snag one up and you don't, you're not able to by, you know, your local, your local area. Hmm. Well, let's show I got one more clip from Adam and then let's move into Octomore. Yes. yes. Sound good? Love it. Sounds good. We took risks, you know, we started using casks that nobody was maturing whiskey in because we knew the quality of the oak. And if you have quality, you're always going to do something good and you're going to take your whiskey to where you've never been before. That's where we want to go. We want to try and experiment and improve our knowledge. We're only making single malt for ourselves now, so we are not under pressure to make huge volumes. Giving yourself time, you know, to make the best whiskey rather than rushing to fill a, a quota to be efficient. That's not what our aim is. If we just did the same things as anyone else and bought barrels, you know, American bourbon barrels, and filled the spirit in there because that's good and didn't learn anything else, we'd still make great whiskey. But there's always that question, that curiosity. How can we improve? How can we change? What flavors can we add? Where can we go? And that's the roller coaster ride we've been on over the last few years. I, I yeah. used to do this. I, great timing on the sound. Yes. <laughs> great. And there's great cinematography throughout oh. the film and just those clips, even. Awesome. I think when Thank we you. were talking to Jason from Master and Drum, if I remember correctly, somebody commented that you could literally mute the whole film and just have it on in the background and it would still be so mesmerizing to watch. And it's so true. Yeah. The true testament to you, Greg, on in all of your team and what you did. Yeah. Thank you. I, the, the, the look of it is, is really down to two people more than me. And one of them is Alphonse Palima, who is on our chat tonight. I know he's one of our producers and he's our drone pilot. He shot all the drone footage. Beautiful and, then, work. and um, our cinematographer, Brad Kenyon, did all the interviews with me and, and all the, the a lot of the B-roll in the warehouses as well. But yeah, but, um, this, the, the Scotland showcase is all Alphonse, the, the drone, drones over Scotland. Love it. Yeah, he has those shots where he's coming in, you know, off off in the sea and just coming in. And it's just greater. When you talk about, actually, Jim talks about looking across and, and seeing Brooke Lottie before he was involved. And you have that matching shot that goes along with it. I mean, yeah, just beautiful work. You know, it's funny, uh, Mark. We wanted to get a shot from Bomore. We wanted to fly the drone at full speed the whole way across the lock to, to Brook Lottie instead of just showing it. We realized the drone's range was long enough to get there but not get back. <laughs> so we entertained the idea of having someone stay on the other side and fly it. But then we were like, this is the third day of the you know, 21 day shoot. And we don't really want to lose the drone. The no. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if it was day 20, you'd have been like, yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So hey, let's uh, let's do move into Octomore, but first, yeah. uh, scrolling at the bottom, and we had a couple comments earlier about it. Uh, Wateroflifefilm.com backslash mm. partners slash dummies. Um, that will get you in. You can buy tickets uh, to watch the show there. You are at this point, Greg. You are selling tickets, as you pointed out, to make your money back uh, to pay for the show. At some point, it will be available for streaming. You're going to put it on uh, on some of the streaming uh, services. It, it will be on the streaming services probably near the end of this year. Um, awesome. this is, what we're doing now is what would have been a movie theater run. Like we would have been in, in art house theaters or, and we were going to go to whiskey festivals and film festivals. But this, I always tell people that we got into the Seattle Film Festival on a Tuesday and the Seattle Film Festival got canceled on a Wednesday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's just a perfect example of like what we had to deal with. So this is what would have been that. So yes, we're selling tickets and doing pay-per-view online streamings of those. So um that's that's where we are now, but we will wind up on one of the streamers. Great holiday this year. <laughs> you just watch well, we're, gonna holidays. we're actually doing an extended cut where we can put ten minutes oh, back nice. into stuff. I, actually, the scenes we're watching tonight are scenes that got cut from the film that will be in the extended version. That's nice. The that's fun. Um, our editor was hell bent on getting them back in, so the DVD or Blu-ray will have that. So. Well, and Greg, you've mentioned like in terms of, I mean, obviously you had to cut a lot just in terms where people wouldn't sit for, it's not, you know, Game of Thrones or someone not even Game of Thrones, but you know, for like three hours, Titanic right. style, you know, how, how much footage did you guys have by the end? <laughs> how, uh, <laughs> 40 terabytes, I think. Wow. Oh my Lord. Wow. We shot every interview with two cameras. 
Mm. And then we had a drone shooting simultaneously. And then a lot of stuff we had, we had um, GoPros mounted lots of places. And, I mean, we, yeah. we shot an insane amount of footage and Alphonse is a machine. And the, the, the good thing is he, we work so well together. Like we know each other so well that what we did is he actually had his own car. And so every day we were in the warehouse, we would meet in the morning or the night before and say, here's where we're going to be all day interviewing Jim and Adam and Alan or whatever. Here's what we need on the drone. And he would just go off on his own. And then he'd go get them. So we're, but in essence, that means we're basically doing two shoots at once. So we're gathering three cameras are rolling at one time, two on the interview and one on the drone. So it added up really quickly. Alfonso's yeah. new nickname is the machine, by the way. I'm call the machine. <laughs> now, were you ever out and suddenly you hear the buzzing of the drone and you know, wow, he's at work right now? <laughs> All the time. All the time. And I have to say, he's not a showboat, but he is a he is a bit of a cowboy where he got really good at it where he'd be talking to me, standing outside, we're talking, and he would just go like this, and then the drone would just land in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and we, Brooke Lottie let us fly the drone in the warehouse. Yeah, a lot of those shots you see of Adam and stuff, we were flying the drone through. The, some of the places wouldn't let us fly inside, but, but Brooke Lottie did and Springbank did. And I mean, and in the movie, the, 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 the space side Cooper's did, which is you see that absurd amount of casks. Yes. Um, that, that, you know, so we did crash the drone once or twice, but not really? catastrophically. Yeah, wow. the props, they break, they're kind of semi disposable, the propellers on drones, you know? They, I think they, to the point that they even come with like three sets of backups. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Erica, a uh, question here. I'll just let you address this while we get into the Octomores. Uh, but we are, so we have 6.3 here. Um, I was going to go into this. This is perfect yeah. time. Great segue. Great segue. So um, kind of, I think I made a mention to it earlier. I was like, is, the new, is he talking about the numeric thing that we do with Octomore? Or, um, so Octomore, it's, you know, we, we joke around that we say, you know, each release is almost like a new like iPhone. It's the 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, whatever. I don't know when we're going to stop, but we don't look like we're stopping anytime soon. But then within those series, we have four different variations. Um, you know, the, the number, the point, so it's the number, like, so say six point, and then um, one will always be Scottish barley. Mm. Two will most of the time, be, or no, sorry. The first one's always going to be virgin oak. Second is going to be Scottish barley. Third one used to be only for global travel retail. No, I'm messing this all up. No, one. See, they get <laughs> one. One is the Scottish barley. Two is the global travel retail one, which normally would only be over global travel. Three is the Isla barley version, and four is the virgin oak. There we go. Mm. Oh, I got it. Only confused everybody even more when I said all of that. So um, essentially what's really, you know, unique and kind of interesting about this next series that's coming out is typically, like I said, with, you know, one of them only being available global travel retail, um, we, you know, release those in all of the big airports, all that kind of stuff. But as many of us know, not a lot of us were traveling within the last year or so. So this next release, we're actually going to have that series here um domestically which is super unique and fun so we'll nice. have all four releases here hmm. that is good that's yeah. great now what's um octomore so i know recently was octomore tens 10.1 10.3 you should have had an x so. you should have made that an x that's me we got all <laughs> kinds of feedback on it um <laughs> the last the most recent one we had was the 12 um we are okay. already at 13 now they oh, go wow. very, they go very quickly um, so 13 will release here um, in October, November um, of this year. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, and real quick for those watching, Ardbeg, Lafroig, uh, even the PC-10, the Port Charlotte 10, they're going to come in 40 to 50 parts per million. Uh, Jim McEwen, and in the film Water of Life, he go, he's going to get into the Octomore a little bit more and how he does this, but mm -hmm. he's pushing these up to 200 uh, I think the first edition was 167 parts per million. Uh, and this one is 238, I want to say. Uh, yeah. 258, 258 parts yeah. per million. It gives some great time in the movie where but, I was like, ooh, what, what's yeah. he getting ready to say? Gre yeah. <laughs> great job explaining how they do yeah. that. I was so, like, ooh, what is this? Uh, you know, the Port like so the Port Charlottes are kind of more your standard Pete's, and then your, your Octomores are going to be your, just your punch in the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we also do, you know, it's part part of there's been some, I wouldn't even say backlash, but feedback. Um, we okay. are the most heavily peated product in the entire world. In terms of PPM, phenols, all of that, Jim and Adam have been successful in creating that. 
now the debate is smoky and all that. So we don't say we're the smokiest because mm. a lot of people say that there are other more smoky products out there, which is 100% true. Um, we really like to just rely more on the fact that we are truly the most heavily created product. But I think what's beautiful, and I can't remember who mentioned it a little bit earlier, is, you know, we do essentially like smoked salmon. I think it was you, Bart. Um, mm -hmm. Slow and low approach. So very slow whenever we're we're doing, there's a long time essentially that we smoke these malts for on a very low temperature. Now, some of the other distilleries um, like to penetrate the barley, the barley like right away. So it's a very high temperature and a very short amount of time. So it you know, sucks it up like right away. Um, every distillery is kind of different in their, in their process of, of what they do, but that's kind of what we do is you get more of that mesquite campfire barbecue-y um, kind of taste off of it. Yep. hundred percent. And well done, Greg, because Jim starts dialing right in on that. And I was like, Ooh, here we go. Yep. Here we go. Yeah. But it's not just peat though, either. I mean, just like the PC 10, there's other stuff going on with it. It's not just, you know, a peat smack. I mean, it's, there, uh, there's, you know, there's wine cask influence in here as well. There's just nice citrus sweetnesses that uh -huh. come through. Roasted and, peanut. Yeah. I and mean, we, yeah. we vary the age on them year to year too. So you might have one that's, you know, 258 or 268 PPM and it might be a four, you know, three or four year old, or you might have a 258, 268 that's six or seven years old. And those two are going to taste dynamically different depending mm -hmm. on, you know, the age, the cask, the barley and all that kind of stuff, which I think Optimore is another really fun. I've done a few tastings like side by side. Um, there, it's it's really fun to kind of see the the differentiations of all of them for sure. Oh yeah, it's definitely part of the magic because the the first one I had left me a little bit low or flat, not flat, but I wasn't as I think the hype was there. And then someone said, no, 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 try this one. And then I was like off the rails. I was like, what the hell? Well, we had we had we, six point one was the first one we had, and we were like, okay, you know, it's good, it's peated. They're more expensive, you know. They're coming in one eighty to two hundred dollar range. I want to say somewhere in there, and I think the day is, you know, is it worth that or not? Sure. And then we had a sample of six point oh three. Oh yeah, fan yeah. Sent fans sent us the sample, and I and was like, was, oh, where's this it, at? Yeah, it was, it was at least to us, and six point one was still good. Yeah, but yeah. six point three. Uh, there are definitely some favorites. Everybody has like their favorites. I was able yeah. to see one of mine out. You know, I, at one time I had it, you know, for when I was working, it was a seven series and seven, four is one of my favorite ones we've ever made too. There was one in the eight series. There's always a few that, you know, they're like, Oh, that one was my favorite, but nope. I found another seven, four and I have not reopened it yet. Cause I'm like, huh. oh, I just yep. can't open it yet. There's not any more of them. <laughs> yes. So yes, yeah, so we haven't seen any of the fours, which you said was virgin Oak. Um, Sounds like or, I need to send another sample. That would, oh, well, that would be, like those would stuff. be interesting to try because the heavy yeah. peat with a virgin oak Ugh, would have man. to do some good That's stuff. That's like dirty whispering. <laughs> it's, it's nice, right? <laughs> you're drinking the 6.3 guys, right? Right now? Yes. Yes. That's that's my favorite of the ones I've had. There's, uh, there's some early ones I haven't had, but 6.3 six, and 7.3 are my two favorites. Oh, um, so you're a three series kind of guy. We, <laughs> so you can see my bottle is getting low. I can guarantee you Bart's bottle oh, is probably yeah. still up here. Oh, yeah. Well, when I come he over here, I, yeah, when I come over here, I'm like, where's it at? Where is it? You Does that mean you need to send samples to Bart? And, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm sending to Scott, not Bart. Well, yeah. Your bottle looks lonely. Bring it down onto the table. Real quick. Oh, hey, a little cowbell. Little cowbell for casks and ashes. Yes. Super chat coming in. Loving the storytelling that's, that's and the obvious name. passion from y'all. I'm oh. really looking forward to seeing the film, Greg. Thank you. More cowbell. Thank Thanks, you. casks and ashes. I did see um, a comment I, that um, where are the non Isla Barley peated? Um, I think you're, I th I'm assuming you're meaning like where, where do we peat our barley? Is that am I reading that right? Where are Which the non- did it? we cover it maybe? Nocturnal prods, it says, where are the non Isla barley peated? Oh, unless he's talking about. I see Alphonse asked him a follow up question. Oh, Wh there we go. Where are they from or do you mean which brands? Um, I mean, I, you know, either way, I mean, I'm sure Erica can answer that better than I can, but. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for peated stuff outside of Isla for barley-wise, I mean, Highlands and yeah, everywhere kind of in, in sort of the, the mainland yeah. Scotland will will have it. And if you're talking directly where do we do our barley and non-peated stuff, we do it, in, well, actually, even in the peated stuff is um, Inverness. So that's where we do our, that's where our, our barley uh, malting facility is. 
So yeah, one thing we didn't talk, or maybe we briefly touched on, but the Octomores are cask strength as well. And this 6.3 was at 64% ABV, which is just a head knocker. Yum, yum. You know, it's <laughs> funny. Go ahead, go. I, always, I always tell people that it would be easy for a distillery to make a whiskey like this and have it be the kind of thing that you dare someone to drink and you get a free t-shirt if you manage to drink it, you know, like a novelty, <laughs> but it's not that, that is, and I've, anyone who hasn't tried Octomore, that's not the experience at all, no. at all, you know, um, it could be like the, you know, 50 ounce steak. And if you eat the whole thing, what's that movie, the John Candy movie, the yeah, 96 or whatever, the, the, uh, summer rental, is it summer rental? Anyway, the, yeah. it, that's not what that is at all, no. whether it's the ABV or the PPM or any other acronym I'm not thinking of right now. It's just a beautiful, big balanced whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. in, in the movie, in, in the movie, you see Jim drinking Octomore on the beach. Uh huh. He, that's the six three he's drinking on the beach. Beautiful. Six three and seven three were the two bottles we brought there to, to use as props. And by the way, we were on the east coast of Australia. That is sunrise, not sunset. Oh, <laughs> really? So we were drinking. We were drinking that at five thirty in the morning. Anyway. If you don't believe in drinking before noon, then we just can't be friends. <laughs> and you haven't experienced brunch, then. Oh, that's right. <laughs> what is better than bacon and scotch? Absolutely. Ooh. Nothing. <laughs> we've, even, we've even learned doing our 16-bottle uh, shootouts with peat. It's amazing when all the peats are laid out there that the peat ends up pushing into the background, and it's all the other little subtleties that start to come forward. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah, if you can line up several peat, even uh -huh. heavily peated, yep. you know, um, hitter side by side and just go back and forth, you start the peat will wash out the palate, and you start to then get yep. the differences or the different notes that are in those yep. whiskeys. Play with your so, whiskey because that was one of the most amazing things. When I'm going, man, I'm not even getting hit with the peat anymore. I'm yeah. picking up the subtleties in each one of these. Hmm. All right, what I, else did you want to pull up here? Yeah, that was I it for the learned. tasting. So. I just learned the other day, I did a, a tasting online with Lynn McEwen, and, and she said that the PPM on the Octomores, that, that they don't know ahead of time what they're going to be. They don't have a target for the PPM. They have a target for how long they want to smoke, and, and the PPM, that's why it'll vary from everyone. You know, they, don't, yeah. they could dial that in and then compromise somewhere else. But there's a science, but there's not an exact science to it. So every time <laughs> they're kind of like, well, that's what we got. So we're working with that. So, yeah. People Which keep is hinting that there's going to be some monster coming out soon, but no, I honestly, I'm not being coy. I don't know. I've just been, I've seen Adam say there's keep, you yeah. know, keep your eyes yeah. open. There's some kind yeah, of uh, beast. Yeah. I, I may or may not have gotten my eyes on, on uh, the 13 series already. <laughs> and uh, you guys should be really excited. It's all, it's all. Oh, really? <laughs> and the black art. Now I think I can, I, you know, maybe it's a teaser and maybe I'm going to, you know, they'll be like, Erica, why'd you say it? Um, <laughs> I, I believe the black art, where the, 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 the juice that we're utilizing, I think there's like one percent of it left, essentially, and so it's like the less of the, the last of the stock prior to 2001 will be in this year's mm. black art, and there was only like one or two percent left for this year's wow. series. So, I I have a black art story. Now it was 3.1, I think, right? That think so so we I, and then we bought 4.1 was right. the first one we had i'm a huge board gamer as well all the games coming over from europe i've got games get sent to me from poland all over the place and i go to a convention down in dallas and i was running i thought it was going to be an eclectic 10 12 people show up for a tasting where they were all supposed to bring their own single malt scotch as well and we were going to share or the whiskey fans as well. And I had 58 people show up for that, which was way too many. I couldn't handle it at all. That's and, a big uh, game of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh <laughs> my God. But, but what it, what it, the surprise shocker was, all of a sudden my name was floating all around. And I went out when I first got there, I hit the expo hall. And somebody says, uh, a guy from Ohio says, you got to go over to whatever, uh, you know, table 72, the guy's looking for you. And I'm like, for what? He goes, it's a whiskey thing. So I go over there and he goes, hey, oh yeah, come here. Pulls me behind, says, all I got's a Dixie cup. You got to try this. And I had not had the black arts. And he he pulls it out from under the table. It's like it was all illicit. And he, and he pours a little bit and I immediately covered it. And he goes, oh yeah. <laughs> and I had a little nose of it and a sip. And I, th I don't know if I called you later that night, but I said, my God, we got to find some of this 
broke the audio. Where is this? <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is unbelievable. The fact that you got to try it out of a Dixie cup is just the best thing. Yeah, I know. It's got to be part <laughs> that of it. Wax, the wax coating probably really gave yeah. a lot to the. Yeah, well, you know, and, he, and he, I didn't savor it in there a lot, but the fact I covered it real quick I and mean, got yeah. a nose. No. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, you know and about the that's nose. That's the way it should be. Jim would tell you just that's that's one hell of a way to, to, to drink some black art right there. Well, and the way he was searching for me was amazing. I was like, oh, this is going to be, what's he got? So, <laughs> Bart, Bart, do you know about, I don't know that, I think it's called the Whiskey Game. It hasn't come out yet. There's a guy there was somebody in, Prague, in the chat that says David, Game. Da well, David Burke, I think is his name, had reached out because it's called Distilled. Is that the game you're talking That's about? The one that oh, Mark no. just mentioned. Oh, it's a different I don't one. No, the one, this one's, in, these guys are in Prague. The guy's name is Peter Polkers. I'm probably butchering his Czech last name, but. And he reached out to me months ago and said, could I introduce him to Jim McEwen? Jim was the last person that they wanted. They have a whole series within the game of categories based mm -hmm. on whiskey legends. And they wanted Jim's permission. And I introduced them to each other and he gave him permission. Oh. So, oh. Uh, but the game hasn't come out yet. Like literally the guy wrote to me like two Weezer. weeks ago. Weezer. I'll have to look uh, for that because yeah, yeah. David, David Burke had reached out to me through Roy Aqua Vitae. And his game's called Distilled, and he's getting ready to do a oh. Kickstarter on it and everything else. And cool. the whole idea is like your your uncle died, and you've been you've been willed this distillery, and then you've got to decide how do you make it profitable. You can do some short term gin. You can try selling White Dog. You can start sourcing casks. It looks interesting. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, it's interesting to see my worlds colliding. He's going to slap me at any point in time here when I get into board gaming. So, sorry. Oh, how I watched the movie. What? Oh, how do I watch the movie? Sorry. Thought he was mocking me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Greg. Uh, yeah, you can go to this. The, the web address is scrolling at the bottom of the screen here. Wateroflifefilm.com slash partner slash dummies. And we have tickets for sale there. Um, and you can watch it on any device that streams. Um, and right now, those are your best bets. Uh, later in the year, there'll be other options, too. Um, can I tell you a humble brag story about Black Art 4? Please. Absolutely. When, we were in, when you see the opening titles of the movie, you see the bottle of whiskey pouring into a glass. And we knew we wanted that to be a Black Art for two reasons. It looked cool. It was a white background. It was going to look really cool. And it didn't, there was no brand on it. We wanted it to be, but we knew we wanted it to be a Black Art. So when we were shooting at Brooklady, we asked Alan Logan, can you give us an empty bottle of Black Art? We don't, we can give it back. It doesn't have to have anything in it. We'll just put whatever in it and dump it. Cause we're going to do this a hundred times. Right. You know, we had hundreds of different shots. It's my hands. It's Trevor's hands. It's, we, we did so many variations. I mean, I, mean, we, I probably have a, a terabyte of that. Hmm. And Alan said, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he left and he came back and he brought, it was a bottle of black guard four sealed. Hmm. And I said, I said, oh no, no, no. I just, we need to pour from it. He's like, well, well, he's like, I don't know. This was on my desk. Just take it. Oh, and uh, we're like, oh, come on. <laughs> so we immediately decided as a team, there were like five of us on the shoot that day. We we're like, well, we can't use that to pour because we're going to do 100 and we're going to miss sometimes. And, we're, you know, so we decanted that, poured something else. I don't know what. Whatever Did the, all of the shots. And then we took the all of that and split it up into five pieces and the five people were on the shoot that day. And I still have mine. Beautiful. Um, Trevor shared his with me on my birthday a few months ago. But uh mm. um, I still have mine. There's, oh, there's there's a, for it. I, don't, I have never had it. Is it delicious? I'm sure. Oh it is. yeah, that was it. Was a it, good one. Yeah, it was Jim. It was Jim's final black art. Yep. It, yep. It's. It, I always say it's red jelly beans. Big red jelly beans. Okay. I think I had. I think I did try that one, but it's been long gone since I've had it in my closet. So yeah. Now there's there's a scene in there as well of Jim and he's in the in one of the warehouses and he's pulling whiskey from a cask and he's and he's from the um the dog. Is it the copper dog? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, and, yeah. Yeah, this I don't know what there. it was, but I could tell by the color of that whiskey, it was something that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it looked almost like, you know, dark, 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 Mike, you know. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, yeah, um, that's good. Whatever that is, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I, that is Jim's, that's Jim's cast that he nicknamed Diana. Oh, um, it's his personal cask. And oh, really? That, I, I may have a tiny little, like, I mean, oh. I might have this much of that. Uh, nice. from that, because they weren't once that was out of the cast, they weren't going to put it back in. So right. Um, oh, but uh, Adam amazing. said to us, "You guys can't brag about having this whiskey because it doesn't have a name and it's never going to get released, and no one will believe you." And I said, "You underestimate my ability to brag about whiskey." <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to believe you. 
I don't care if anyone believes me. <laughs> well, hey, uh, great show. I think let's wrap it up. We're at an hour and 10 minutes, and I think we got through oh, the okay. whiskeys that we wanted to talk about. Um, Greg, well, you- I wanted to ask Greg about behind the scenes stories, okay. and we got it. Oh. oh, we just got it. That was beautiful. <laughs> Well, the more I drink, the more I'll tell you. <laughs> so I will tell you this. So yeah, you can, uh, the, the link at the bottom there, or what's scrolling, if you go to the Water of Life film, uh, I think I think it's fifteen dollars for a ticket to watch the show. It's yeah. well worth. It. Oh yeah. Um, I would, no regrets about watching oh. that at all. Um, yeah. And and like you say, Greg, this is you're doing this now. You're basically you're selling those box office tickets that didn't happen because mm-hmm. of COVID. Uh, this is money that's helping to pay for, you know, making of the movie before it goes to streaming services, you know, down. Yeah, the road, we, so. we, one third of the film was crowdfunded and the other two thirds came from some investors and we're, we're literally working to make our money back. And I mean, mm-hmm. we know that 15 is a little more than people usually pay at a movie theater, at least if they're not in Los Angeles or New York, but you can also get one ticket and watch it with six people. So the, the, the math I think works out. For, and you know, what, what could be more social than drinking whiskey? And, and we really appreciate the whiskey. The embrace we've gotten from the whiskey community, from, and you guys are a perfect example. Early on, early on, before we ever shot the film, you know, um, you, you, it's been amazing. It's been absolutely incredible from the individual fans to Brickladi themselves. I mean, we've, you know, we, we have a, a great relationship with the distillery. We've done so many fun events. And, um, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think the movie, I hope it, to us, it's a celebration. It's a love letter to whiskey. It's a love letter to Scotland. Real, so. real quick, before we do wrap it, another scene from the movie, and it's Mark Rainier, and he's talking about when he fell in love with Brook Lottie. He'd had a whiskey. He was a wine drinker, mm-hmm. uh, but he has Brook Lottie 15. <laughs> I think it was 15. <laughs> yeah, get it, was. Model. it was. Uh, he goes to the distillery, though. When he gets there, the gates <laughs> yeah, are shut. It. It's chain locked. Yeah. And there's a he sign rattles it. that says distillery cl- plant closed. Yeah. No visitors. No visitors. Fuck off, basically. Yeah. Well, uh, no, he gets told that. That's what the guy says to him. Yeah. He rattles well, worker, it. Yeah. Worker comes out and he's like, hey, I just want to come in and look around and take some pictures. F and the off. guy says, yeah. F no, off. Take well, a I will take it. He's like, I'm going to buy this. Place. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to, I might be the owner. F <laughs> off. And, and you know what's even greater? The guy who said that to him still works there. Yeah. Oh, I love it. To this wonder, day. He would I wonder, love that. I wonder he would if love he ever that. found out who it was. Yeah, he would love know, that, or, too. Yeah, yeah, because he talks about getting mind, mind effed over at Waterford all the time with all the different combinations and iterations. Yeah. I will say, um, I, and I wasn't kidding, I'm watching the show. So when you watch Water of Life, you're going to want to make sure you got some Brook Lottie handy because I'm not kidding. I was sitting there, and as soon as I was like, hold on, pause. And then that's that is literally when I went and found my old bottle. Or and some I'm, sort of an Isla whiskey, because if yeah. not, you're just I mean, you feel like you're morphed into Isla yes. for sure. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Now yeah, and it you know, it is about Scotch, it's about Scotland, uh, kind of a focus on Isla, oh, and beautiful. then kind of a focus on Brook Lottie. I wanted to go back. Out. But <laughs> There, I mean, there's other whiskeys that are talked about. You have other sure. people in there as well, you know. Glen Allocky, Belveni. Oh, Glen Allocky. What Billy oh, yeah. Walker's doing with the, oh, we just wow. shot the uh, the 10 batch five. Oh, my God. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's great. No, it's. <laughs> if you like, it, the thing is, is if you like whiskey in general, bourbon, scotch, Japanese, whatever, you will enjoy this movie. Thousand yes. percent. Yes. I will, if you don't like it, I will send you fifteen dollars. How's Woo! that? <laughs> wow! I will not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love are there it. are there plans for Water of the Life Part Two? Oh, there you go. Well, I saw someone wrote in the chat, "Water of Life Two should be about Billy Walker," and I will. I'll be completely honest with you. I would love that, and yeah. we can't get him to give us that amount of access. As much as as much as Jim McEwen is comfortable as all get out in the spotlight, Billy Walker's the opposite, and oh. he just is a private guy. I don't think he's shy. I just think he doesn't share value life. it, or just you know, it's just he doesn't want to do it. You know, yeah. we've approached them a couple of times, and we've gotten very very friendly nose. Um, the other thing, though, is we actually are right now in post on the second film, a sort of standalone side piece to this film, all about independent bottling. Nice. Um, we're trying to explain independent bottlers to people who don't know what that is. And anyone who doesn't drink whiskey doesn't know what that is because it's the weirdest thing in the world. Like it does, there's no food yeah. version of that. There's no beer version of that. Right. Um, and so we're, we had enough footage that we had, we felt like we had about 75 to 80% of the story already 
about independent bottlers. So then I, one of our cameramen, Guy Satchwell, is in Scotland. And during the pandemic, when possible, he's been doing interviews and conducting interviews for me with me sending him questions ahead of time or me even appearing on an iPad next to him, like it's some kind of weird Max Headroom interview. Where, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's worked. And, you know, we're, it'll be a little while, but we're working on that. So that's a 19, that's a 1980s reference to yeah. those youngins out there. Yeah, that's true. That's right. yeah. <laughs> we all Everybody get here gets it. I got it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, the independent bottling stuff. I remember Roy were with him and it was always, I can't even say it like he said, it was independent. It was, it's like, it's all chopped. Independent bottler. <laughs> I was like, what are, you, what are you saying? <laughs> He's like, independent bottler. I'm like, I thought it was one word. I kept trying to I figure it out. He's had a few Dixie cups, clearly. You're right. Yes. I saw Nate was referencing <laughs> only Bart with the Dixie cut, cup and the 3.1 Black Arts. Yes, it was interesting. At a board game convention. I, you know, you the depth just keeps going with you, man. It's just <laughs> <laughs> you're an onion, you know, so many layers. So yeah. Many layers. Oh, yeah. Look at Yeah. Here's the mocking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dixie cup. That's what we call them at home. <laughs> <laughs> so all right well let's wrap Sweet. it up thank you guys for joining awesome. us thanks uh greg and uh thanks erica as oh, well thank you thank you awesome stuff this thanks everybody that tuned in appreciate it as well all right. bye guys enjoy the film all right scotch, Bye, yeah. scotch guy. right joyce let us know what you think yep there you go